topic like this, power generation is the most important topic, but uh, another important uh, piece of the energy mix are biofuels. And I'm here now with Irene Sangsare Chevy uh, of Venture Energy, and we're going to talk about the growing of Jatropha uh, in Cameroon and in other places. Irene, good to see you. Thanks, thanks. Um, well, you pleasure. started Venture Energy in 2006, and uh, you gave a presentation on your experiences growing Jatropha, some of the successes and challenges that you've had. Can you talk about uh, the, the, the last few years and, and what's happened in growing Jatropha for biofuels? Okay, thank you very much for giving me the possibility to present you my, my experience as a business developer on the area of Jatropha. We started in 2006 with uh, an experimental or a trial nursery in Cameroon uh, where we set up a, a one hectare nursery. And after six months, we come to see day by day how the plant were how the plant were growing and how it was really how it was really taken off and right now we have set up uh, a plantation of uh, 100 hectare and we are planning to scale up the plantation this year to 500 hectare mm -hmm. it was not easy at the beginning but uh, as you may know in such a venture we need to have at least uh, we need to have a uh, you need to be optimistic on what you are on what you are doing, and that was the that was our case. That was our case. Mm. Uh, we have uh, challenges facing. Uh, the first challenge was first of all the tenure issue. As you may know, the land issue is one of the most important issue regarding uh, 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 grid plantation in Africa. I mean, the significance of land in Africa is not so easy. If, uh, it's not so easy, or it's not so simple to understand as in as it's regu as it's regulated in any other legal framework. Land in Africa has something to do with human being. Land has something to do with anthropology. Land has something to do with culture. You cannot get a, a document from the government giving handing you over a piece of land and so that you can say that you can do something on the long term on it. That was our first challenge. And the change which we have was that the people on the region was looking for such a um, such an opportunity where they can where they can be considered where they can get possibility to work on to work and get revenues and that was the first thing which we have provided them. So this is this is an important part for the local communities uh, absolutely for, for a revenue stream absolutely. to make money. Absolutely. Uh, so what have you found as you've grown Jatropha? Are you getting high yields? Do you, um, how far have you gotten in the process? Have you actually created the oils? Or are you just experimenting with grow, growing the Jatropha? We have already experienced, we have already made some experience. We have already extracted some oil in order to be sure on the amount of oil inside the seeds. We don't want to rely only on literature. We have we have already, as I said before, we have planted 100 hectares. And due to the fact that we need the oil, we need the seed for plantation expansion. So we have just pressed a small amount of oil to test in, uh, general, uh, in genset uh, machine to see in which extent we can be able to provide electricity in the future to the rural population. And the test was very successful. So you're using this for electricity generation, not f just fuels. No, no, so no. I mean, the, the the issue is we don't we want to look on we want to look on both sides. The first aspect of our our, our our first intention is to satisfy the domestic the domestic market. As you may know, Africa has 80 percent of its population living in rural area and less than 10 percent rural electrification. It means that there is a huge market for rural electrification in Africa. And if we can be able to provide fuels locally, and if the population can also be can also be involved in the production of this fuel, it's already an added value for them and for the whole communities. And beyond, we will see in this in, in what in which extent we can be able to export the production. I mean, the first focus is first of all rural electrification because the economic scale, we want to get a short return on investment 
a, a, short pay, a, short pay, a short payback period and a high return on investment so that the first focus for our venture is to satisfy first of all the local market. Well, wh one of the um, positive attributes of Detrofa is that it can be grown on marginal lands. It does not necessarily compete with crop lands. But as we've heard, um, if you grow on marginal lands, you're, you get marginal results. So now they're realizing that you may have to use some of the best land to grow Jatropha. Um, is this a problem? I mean, from our experience, it's not a problem because we have started from the beginning with intercropping. Uh, we have, for instance, last year, we have realized last year uh, more than 20,000, more than 20 hectares maize. And it was the first time that in the region that somebody has set up a, such a big plantation of maize. And the maize which, we, we, the, the maize which was produced was handed over to the population. It means that the issue of food versus fuel is not a it's not a question for, it's not it's not a, a matter for us. We think that we will we are in the forestry region. We don't get into the forest to grow jatropha in forest, but we are growing jatropha on savanna. And in this region, savanna is not is considered as marginal land because people use to grow caca cocoa and coffee in forest. They never grow coffee or cocoa on savanna. It means that the definition of marginal land differs from the context in which we are in. In this case, I can assure you, um, uh, savanna are marginal lands because they have no economical value. Even for food crops, food crops are grown in forests. 